Well, I was surprised to discover that the number one ingredient, even in a natural deodorant like Tom's, is propylene glycol in a stick deodorant. And so propylene glycol is found in, in um, antifreeze. <laughs> so we're putting that on, right under our armpits. Um, and as women, you know, close to our breasts, it, this stuff migrates. So it's just insane. And so what I use is um, baking soda. I put a little baking soda in a salt shaker and I sprinkle it on my hand and I go under my armpit and good to go the whole day. And one of my clients was even um, a hot yoga instructor and she was nervous about trying baking soda because she said she was reapplying her deodorant a few times a day and she tried baking soda and she swears by it now. Cosmetics and makeup are not um, regulated by our government. They're, they're regulated by um, an internal cosmetic organization and so they're not tested for safety. And so um, there is an assortment of, of toxic chemicals in our uh, lipsticks, lead being one, um, parabens being another, it's a preservative, um, s sodium lauryl sulfate, which is an irritant. I mean, there's um, a, just an entire laundry list of chemicals that we're being exposed to in our, in our makeup and cosmetics. And so um, Environmental Working Group has a great website called skindeep.org, and you can plug in whatever makeup you're thinking about putting on or, or um, skin cream and look on the website and see where it, where it falls into, whether it's uh, toxic versus non-toxic. So uh, the good news is that there's really great natural makeups and cosmetics right now. Uh, this, you know, years ago, 10 years ago, there wasn't. And, but now, you know, it's so, um, there's a plethora of wonderful natural makeups. And um, I know my daughter, when she was a kid, you know, she wanted to wear Maybelline Great Lash, and I was explaining to her that it had ma um, mercury in the mascara. And she's like, oh, Mom, it's not going to kill me. But, you know, yes, it might eventually over time. There, you know, it, it, why, why risk it? You know, why put in um, heavy metals into your body w when it's so unnecessary? And there's wonderful makeups now that don't contain um, mercury and uh, and toxins. So she's come around, and uh, I'm I'm glad I'm glad that that's happening. The other thing that's in makeup and cosmetics are phthalates. So these are hormone disruptors. So phthalates are found in uh, they make fragrances last longer. So they're found in fragrances. They're found uh, to make your nail polish not chip and to make your mascara stay on longer. So. Um, it's really important to start reading labels, you know, not just re reading food labels, but reading your makeup and cosmetics and personal care product labels as well. So household cleaners, the, the, the companies have what's known as, um, you know, um, classified or, you know, trade secrets, basically. And so they don't tell you what's in there. Um, there'll be something like 98.8% inert ingredients, and those are the things that we have to worry about. Those are the chemicals that they're not really r revealing. I know the government is sort of working on this. They're trying to create more transparency. But um, if, a, if a product smells really strong and makes your nose and eyes run, run away. <laughs> run away, because uh, they are Toxins. There are toxins in there that are um, that are problematic, for, um, causing upper respiratory problems, asthma, allergies, skin irritants. So switch to hydrogen peroxide, baking soda, white vinegar, that sort of thing, um, and you'll be good to go. Essential oils are good. Lemon juice. You know, just the back to the basics. So sunscreens have um, a lot of problems with, with chemicals in that, um, you know, I'm a believer in getting some sun on our, our skin. Um, I go out every morning and before 10 a.m. and get sun into my eyes uh, because it resets the melatonin and, and um, I start my day with, with a little bit of sun. And um, 
So I don't use any sunscreens, but um, if you wanted to use a sunblock, a zinc oxide would be the best kind of barrier. It's, it's less toxic than, than the rest. But um, most of the sunscreens have um, hormone disrupting chemicals in them. And so you want to look for safe, uh, natural sunscreens that contain no toxins. And you can find them, again, we're living in an era that there's really some really great safe choices out there. And if you have questions, you, know, you can go to the Skin Deep uh, website and, and check to see. Um, but I, I have a recipe in my book for sunscreen. Um, it's basically a scorbic acid powder, which is vitamin C and water, and maybe adding a little bit of glycerin. And it's a, a, you spray it on your skin. It's not a block. It's not a barrier. But what it does is it goes into the cells of the skin about 20 minutes before you're out in the sun, and it will prevent burn. And the vitamin C is, is a great antioxidant, and so it, it helps prevent wrinkles and all that. So, so I've used it uh, going to Hawaii, for example, and ne not getting burned. And even my daughter, who's fair-skinned, she was never burned. Yeah, absolutely not. Um, just because it's on the store shelf doesn't mean it's been tested for safety. Um, the European Union has something called the precautionary principle, and what that means is that the, ma it's the manufacturers need to prove that the product is safe before they um, send it out to market. Here in America, that's not the case at all. It goes out to market, and then if people get bad reactions, then they'll have a recall. Oh, we're sorry, you know. But, um, no, it's not tested for safety, and that's one of the reasons why we need to be aware consumers and start reading our, our product labels and really being um, taking care of ourselves and being our own health advocates. It's an internal group, a cosmetics industry group that's that's sort of bold, um, watchdogging it. It's not being monitored by the FDA, and so. Um, it's, again, it, you really have to be an aware consumer and start reading labels and, and buying products with as few uh, chemicals in there and as close to nature as possible. So I love coconut oil, for example, or rosehip oil, or um, natural, um, well, baking soda, for example, as deodorant. Um, Coconut oil makes a great um, moisturizer, and it's great for your hair and scalp. Something like 1 in 64 children now is diagnosed with autism, which is really, really shocking. In the past, it was something like 1 in 10,000 children. So something is going on. Um, it's, it's a crisis that we're in with our, with our kids. Um, 1 in 10 has... Um, um, been diagnosed with ADHD, uh, depression. There's uh, one in eight has anxiety. One in eight has uh, contemplated suicide. This is children under 18 years old. 40% have food allergies. Um, it's just extraordinary. And I work with pediatricians who tell me that their practices have changed over the past 15 years, not the same as it used to be. They tell me now that 80% of their, um, their patients have chronic disease. They have Crohn's disease. They've got, um, you know, obesity. They've got diabetes. Um, things that just were not, they were unheard of years ago. Attention deficit disorder off the charts. So, um, you know, there's something that needs to be addressed, and I believe that starting with food and getting kids off of genetically modified foods, getting them on organic food, um, away from the, um, the, the food dyes, the artificial food dyes, which are banned in Europe, by the way, um, they cause temper tantrums in normal children, food dyes, and that's why they're banned in Europe. But here in America, they're sold in everything, from children's vitamins to cough syrup, you know, to uh, the, the imitation artificial blueberries, to the blue yogurt tubes that kids are eating. You know, it's just pervasive. And so um, when you get children 
back to eating normal, kind of as close to nature as possible foods, their symptoms change. So one in 10 children now has been diagnosed with asthma, and that's a dramatic increase from the past. Um, they find that um, homes that use um, uh, fragrances and um, uh, chemical, strong chemical cleaners in the home, they tend to have a higher incidence of asthma. So, um, you know, something that easy that parents can do is just to start to switch out to all natural products in the home and not use the air fresheners and the, the, those disinfectant sprays, uh, and that should help a lot. Right, the statistics are that uh, one in nine has contemplated suicide. And I know with my own daughter, um, when she was about 16, 15, she, I found notes on her email that she was talking to friends about killing herself. And um, it was very, very disturbing. Um, I spoke to a psychologist, and for, at first the psychologist said, oh, it's, you know, nothing, don't worry about it, but what I would do is go look online and see her browsing history, that someone who's really serious about um, committing suicide will have a, um, will search online how to do it. Well, I went online and I saw how to, how to use a gun. <laughs> it's like, oh my God, this was like my blood ran cold. So, you know, she was serious. Um, they wanted to put her on meds. They wanted to put her on this, um, antidepressants, anti-anxiety medication, and I found another way. I found uh, a lab out of Chicago that I tested her um, biochemistry, her brain biochemistry, and then worked with a doctor named Dr. Albert Mensa, and we put her on supplements, and she is fine. She's um, she's happy, she's going to college, she had been addicted to drugs and alcohol, and he told me that um, she wasn't really addicted, she was self-medicating because her brain just did not stop because of um, the genetic sort of disorder that she had that has been addressed using supplements. And uh, I'm so grateful, and I have my daughter back. It's, it's been phenomenal. Shockingly, one in six children is being diagnosed with a developmental disability. One in six. I, I just remember when I was growing up, I mean, we had one kind of kid in class who seemed odd and needed help. Um, no, it's, it's, it's an epidemic. There's something, again, there's something going on with our children. They are the sort of canaries in the coal mine. We look to them like, like our animals, like our animals are getting ill. Um, you know, talk to veterinarians who tell me, you know, the incidence of leukemia in cats and, and cancer in dogs is just off the charts. And so with our children, same thing. Now, developmental disability, one in six, it's, um, it's something to take a look at and, and figure out, you know, we need to get to the root cause of this. This is something that we can't just brush under the rug. You know, before long, it's going to be one in three. One in three children is now diagnosed with e either being overweight or obese. One in three. Now, the, the problem occurs, I believe, in utero. Um, pregnant moms are exposed to certain chemicals. They're called obesogens. They, um, things like phthalates, for example, and other chemicals will cause um, weight gain. It, it will cause... Um, the body um, to gain weight unnecessarily or more easily and then have a harder time losing it. So it's not the child's fault. They, they, can't, they have no uh, shut-off switch to, you know, for their appetite. They can't help it. And so um, it's starting out in utero. So pregnant women need to pay attention to what they're being exposed to, their levels of uh, chemical exposure. They need to kind of... Um, address it before they get pregnant and then definitely while they're pregnant and then while the children are growing not to expose them to plus for example and and to um, you know the um, 
the, the chemicals in their mattresses and in their nap mats, uh, for example, can, can cause all these things. So there's also a tremendous amount of hidden sugar that's uh, in their food, in baby food, um, in juices. So many moms are giving the children, you know, these sweet drinks, and those can ca definitely cause weight gain. So um, there are easy, easy, simple solutions, but again, you know, they're, they're starting out at the gate with, uh, with a little bit of a handicap, so um, it could be harder to, to lose the weight as they get older. It comes up during puberty. That's when the weight seems to be um, showing up and uh, around either, even eight or nine years old. Um, I also, one of the pediatricians that I work with told me that she noticed that uh, young boys around eight or nine are developing breast buds. So they're getting too much estrogen from the, these chemicals. Um, so yeah, it's really, it's sad. So uh, today, the lifespan of children, for the first time in history, is less than their parents. Okay, so like my mom lived to be 99, and I'm hoping to go to 120, right? But children who are coming, who are being born now, their life expectancy is going to be lower. And, um, and that's, you know, a pretty significant um, number. So it's time to take action and time to start making changes and start eating real food and, and avoiding the chemicals in, that we're exposed to on an everyday basis because otherwise um, this is just not going to look good for society. One of the things I do is I go into people's homes and try to help them figure out when they have sort of mystery illnesses. And I had a client who had a chronic cough. She was on inhalers and codeine cough syrup for years. And she couldn't figure out, or the doctor couldn't figure out, what the cough was coming from. But she said to me, you know, when I sleep in a hotel, I don't cough. And I'm like, well, hello, there's something going on in your home. So I, wa I walk into her home and I'm looking around and I don't see anything until I go into her bedroom. And in her bedroom she had a ton of scented candles. And my throat started, you know, <clears throat> I'm like, <laughs> I could feel it. And I said, well, here's your problem. This is it. And she's like, oh, oh, no, no, no. This, I'm not getting rid of my candles. These are, like, these were expensive. They were gifts. They relaxed me. Um, I light them every night. I take a bath with them, <laughs> right? And I said, this, you know, when you see uh, the word fragrance on a label, it can mean up to a hundred different synthetic chemicals in that one catchphrase. And so you're being exposed to hundreds of, of these chemicals right here in your bedroom. So we removed the candles. She wasn't happy about it, but I said, let's try it as an experiment. And about three, four days later, she called me up and she's like, my cough is gone. Hallelujah, okay? Then I went back and it's like, okay, now let's drill deeper. She had scented mousse and perfume and her deodorant was scented. Every single thing in her bathroom was scented. Aside from the cleaners and, you know, it's just, uh, it goes on and on and on. And so people are just not aware of the impact that, that uh, these scents can have. I consider pesticides to be a food additive. Um, you can't see it or taste it or, or smell it, but it's there and it, le it leaves toxic pesticide residues behind on our fruits and vegetables. So um, there are certain fruits and vegetables that are much more um, toxic than others and others that are safer. So um, foods like strawberries, for example, you never want to eat a non-organic strawberry they inject the pesticide into the root system, so it comes up into the flesh, so you can't wash it or peel it. Apples, tremendous amount, something like 64 different uh, pesticide residues are found on, on the skin of apples. So you can peel that off, but then you're losing all the vitamins. Um, the pesticides in tomatoes, again, another like something like 60, 60 uh, toxic residues are found on, on, on tomatoes. 
Um, leafy green vegetables, same thing. And potatoes, again, goes into the root system. So even when you're peeling the potato, you're still getting the, the pesticides. So the thing about pesticides is that they're designed to destroy the nervous system of bugs. So you need to think about what is it doing to our nervous system? You know, really, like, what is it doing to our nervous system? So it's insidious, it's slow, it's not gonna happen overnight, but it's, it happens. And when you're giving your kids apple juice, for example, non-organic apple juice, loaded with uh, pesticides, grapes, um, raisins, little pesticide bombs, you know, as I like to say. Um, so you really wanna pay attention to um, the fruits and vegetables that have the highest levels, which I mentioned, um, and then the ones that are, uh, have less are the ones that you can peel. So pineapples, avocados, onions, bananas have much less. And you, you know, if you don't want to um, spend the money on organic, you know, you're a little bit safer with those fruits and vegetables. However, I think that, you know, well, I know that the antioxidant levels and the health benefits of organic um, produce is much um, enhanced. And so it's just better for your health. And when you eat food coming from a farmer's market or you're growing your own, I grow my own herbs and it, I throw fresh mint and parsley um, and cilantro into my smoothie every morning. It's fantastic. I mean, I could just feel my cells coming alive. And um, I just know that you know, eating that way is, is just the best thing you can do for your body. So EMFs, again, are insidious. They're everywhere, um, from our cell phones to the Wi-Fi towers to the laptops to our, um, you know, the, the, the clock radios and the, the cordless phones that we're exposed to every day in our homes. So um, what I like to tell people to do is to create a, like a sleep sanctuary and have no electronics in your bedroom when you go to sleep at night. If you wanna have your cell phone as your alarm clock, put it on airplane mode. Um, unplug everything that you can. You know, if you can turn off your Wi-Fi at night, turn off the Wi-Fi router, great. Some people, um, I go into people's homes with my meters and I measure and sometimes I can't get the fields down at all. So I'll have them turn off their uh, circuit breaker to the bedroom. Just sh everything just quiet down. We really want to have just a very peaceful place to sleep. Um, you know, the children are being bombarded with, um, with so many um, fields at school, too. And so sometimes there's no way around it there. So when, you, when you're home, have a break. Have some screen time break. Uh, Victoria Dunkley, uh, she's a doctor who wrote a book on... Um, Getting, um, putting children on a four-week um, screen fast, she calls it, to just take them off of their screens altogether. And she's reversed bipolar disorder and you know, ADHD. Um, our brains just get hooked up and, and uh, overstimulated by all of the, the information that's coming in. And so it's really important to, to just calm it all down, you know, especially when you're having meals at night uh, put your cell phones away, talk to each other, have a family meal. That would be really, really great. Well, laundry detergents have a lot of synthetic fragrances in them for the most part. And so you want to find things that are free and clear, basically. Um, and um, there's this product called Soap Nuts that I use that I love, that uh, they're made from these nuts, these brown nuts that you throw in the washing machine and they, they make my wash smell delicious and they don't suds up. You know, it was kind of, it, it took an adjustment because it's almost like shampoo. You want to see the suds, you know, but with the laundry, um, it wasn't necessary and my laundry comes out smelling great. So they're hard to find. Um, I could find them at certain natural product stores and online, um, but yeah, they're, they're a good, a good alternative. And also using things like borax and uh, baking soda um, in, your, in your wash is, is a really good way to freshen and brighten the, the colors. It's non-toxic.
Oh gosh, you know, I don't know. That's that's a really tough question. I think it's it's going to be based on consumer demand and need. And so when when people stop buying the toxic stuff and are starting to buy now the natural products, uh, the whole natural products industry is exploding. And I think companies are recognizing, okay, well, people don't want so so much of this anymore. We're going to give them what they want. So you you know vote with your dollars basically. Mattresses are my number one uh, source of toxic chemicals that we're, our faces are, you know, up against the mattress for eight hours a night. You know, we're breathing in um, formaldehyde, boric acid, uh, flame retardants, um, polyurethane foam. Um, it's just an enormous stew of, of toxins that, um, that we are being exposed to. And if the one thing you can do is to buy a, a mattress without these chemicals, you'll be saving yourself a lot of uh, time and money and um, in enhancing your health. When I started sleeping on an, um, I sleep on a naturopedic mattress, and when I started sleeping on that, I noticed that uh, my sleep became deeper. I woke up refreshed, and I started dreaming uh, I remembering my dreams, which was an added bonus. I just thought, wow, that's interesting. So obviously there was something about um, the physiology and the relaxation that allowed me to remember my dreams, which was sort of this really great added bonus. So you want to look for a mattress that doesn't contain um, these harsh chemicals, uh, flame retardants, and look for ones that use um, like natural latex, uh, organic cotton, wool, that sort of thing, so that they don't, um, you know, we just don't even know what, what, uh, what impact they have on our health. It's uh, especially for children, young children, and they're putting flame retardants in these uh, nap mats that children are sleeping on now. So um, it's criminal. I just think it's criminal. There's, there's a better way. Yes, well, the European Union um, has the precautionary principle where they, uh, if a product has to be proven by the manufacturer to be safe before they put it on the market. Uh, here in America, it's the opposite. Um, but the th also, European Union, um, they banned um, artificial food dyes. And so, uh, because they create um, temper tantrums in normal children, so why are they being sold here is a mystery. The food dyes are in our vitamins. They're in children's cough syrup. Um, they're in you know the blue yogurt that kids are eating in the squeezy thing. Um, the if you go to McDonald's in in the UK, their uh, strawberry sundae is is uh, colored with real strawberries, and here it's made with. FDA number three, you know, red dye number two. Um, orange Fanta soda is made from pumpkin extract there. Here it's made from, again, artificial colors. Um, I've picked up a box of Kraft macaroni and cheese in London, and I looked at the label, and it said colored with annatto, which is a plant-based coloring. And here it's FDC number two, number one, yellow dye, blah, blah, blah. It's just like insane. So no reason for it. But so again, we, we as consumers need to, to pay attention, read the labels, don't buy things that's, that's, that have food dyes in it. Mineral oil it comes from crude oil, basically, uh, and it's not a good idea to use on a newborn baby. Absolutely not. So coconut oil would be a great substitute. Um, it's yummy. It comes from a plant, and it's not harmful, and you could eat it. You don't want to put anything on a baby's skin that you wouldn't want to put in your mouth. You know, our skin is, uh, is our lar largest organ, and it, it absorbs. It absorbs what we put on it. It goes into our bloodstream. You know, every microwave oven I've ever tested, because I, I go to people's homes and I have these gauss, this gauss meter, they leak. You turn it on and you have to stand back at least three feet because the radiation coming off of this thing 
is enormous. So um, that's not even to say what's going on to, with the food in, in there. So um, I'm just talking about the radiation that's coming off of it. It, um, you know, and there's so many children are like making popcorn and then having their noses right up, you know, watching. It's vibrating like 300 million times a second and it's vibrating the water molecules. Our bodies are mostly water, so we're being, you know, impacted in that way. Uh, think about it every day. So people are putting their water in to, to reheat their tea every day and then they're drinking it. That water is dead. You know, that has, that has no life force energy anymore. So we want to be drinking water that's alive and you know, natural spring water or filtered water. But when you put water in a microwave, I know they've done studies where they show that the water that has been nuked, or micro, and they call it nuked, right, <laughs> microwaved, um, that doesn't germinate seeds. When they, they water seeds to try to sprout them and they're not sprouting. So why would we want to drink that? So all plastic leaches, um, it leaches chemicals, estrogenic chem chemicals into our bodies. Um, plus the fact that um, most of the, the plastics are not being recycled, so it's going into landfill. So you're not only hurting your body, but you're hurting the earth as well. So glass and um, metal bottles are, are the only way to go. Um, you know, plastic can be a little bit lighter, but when it comes to your health, it's, it's really a not a good thing to do. Um, the, the plastic that says BPA-free, BPA stands for bisphenol A. It is, it's an estrogen um, hormone disruptor. So um, now companies are coming out with BPA-free. Now that doesn't necessarily mean it's safe because they know that customers are smart and they know that customers don't want to have BPA because there were studies that showed that this was a problem. So they say BPA-free, but guess what? They're substituting it with BPS. Not tested, not safe. <laughs> use glass, use metal. You know, be smart. Get yourself a water filter and, and get either glass or metal, and, and that's the way to go. Never heat uh, plastic in, in a microwave. Um, foods that contain certain acidic foods like uh, tomato sauce and orange juice, for example, they will cause the um, plastic to leach even more, even if it's cold, not even heated. And also they discovered that um, baby bottles, even that they said um, BPA-free, when they put them uh, either in sunlight, UV or UV sterilizer for, for bottles, they emitted this fake estrogen. They're leaching estrogen. And we're wondering why our children are suffering, why girls are, are going through puberty early why boys are, are developing breast buds so early. I mean, it's like, what? So plastic, get rid of it. Tap water contains uh, pharmaceutical drugs, <laughs> you know, from Viagra to birth control pills to pain medication. Um, it, it contains um, they're fluorinating our water, which is not, you know, fluoride is a neurotoxin. It's not healthy. It, um, yeah, there's just a lot of, you know, there's heavy metals, there's formaldehyde, there's runoff from uh, the soil. It's just, it's a mess. We don't have clean water anymore. Um, so the best thing to do is to buy yourself a really good water filter and, again, put it in a glass or metal container. Um, yeah, tap water. I mean, they say New York City water is the best and all that, but it still has some some pretty nasty things in it. Um, there, where I live in California, we have something called chloramines. It's a combination of chlorine and ammonia, and they it binds together. So they say you need less of it, um, but it's very hard to to uh, filter out of your water. So you need to kind of make sure know what's in your water. You know, you can. You can write to your, um, your water company and just find out what they're putting in to disinfect and then find a water filter that will address that. Yeah, I love The Real Truth About Health. I mean, I love the, the name of it, just 
that alone was very um, inspiring to me, the real truth about health, because they're not telling us the real truth. <laughs> And so when Steve invited me to speak here, I was, it was a yes immediately. I, I didn't even need any details. I, I knew I wanted to come. I, I just would like to say one other thing. Um, when I was diagnosed with my tumor 15 years ago, doctors told me that no one, you know, that I it would be in the medical textbooks if I could get rid of my tumor without drugs or surgery. Um, that, impossible, they said, that I could heal myself. And they told me that my, uh, I need to have the surgery very quickly because this could turn cancerous at any moment. And so the fear factor was huge. And it took um, trust in my body and my body's ability to heal to um, really kind of uh, go up against the medical establishment. And um, it took about a year for me to heal, but, but I did. And so it was a huge wake-up call. Our bodies are self-healing. We need to um, take charge of our own health and don't wait until you get sick to make small changes. You make some of these simple changes you know, every day and you'll see that your life can, uh, can be great, can be um, vital and, and fulfilling. I, I'm 65 years old and I feel like younger and I feel like I look younger and I feel better than I have in years and it's all due to avoiding the, the toxins. I'm convinced it's toxins that, are, that we're all exposed to on a, on a daily basis.